However, self-defense is not fun or exciting. You know, it's um, it's, it, it's it's crazy. Um, in fact, to defend yourself, you have to be a little mean, a little nasty. Um, you have to fight dirty. Um, you have to be thinking kind of outside the box because in order to be successful, you know, you don't want to think, you know, just push away or anything like that. You got to take it past the extreme. Now, you know, I want you to think of this concept for a second. Um, out in the wild, a predator, you know, a lion hunts gazelle or hunts zebra. You know, it's very common. It, it's the same exact thing with uh, predators or walking around on the street with humans. Um, they are looking for, they aren't looking for the strong gazelle. They aren't looking for the strong zebras. They're looking for the weak ones. They're looking for the, the, the hurt ones, the ones that can't take care of themselves, the one that's straight away from the pack. And the same thing goes with human predators. So there are some things that, basic things that we can do to try to help us make sure that we are safe. Um, first, um, some basics. Is your body language? Is your body language? What kind of body language do you have? You know, very often you want to make, are you the type of person that's going to make eye contact with people or are you going to be looking at the ground? You know, when you're looking at the ground, that kind of basically says, I have no confidence. So you want to make sure you, you maintain eye contact with people. You know, the moment, you know, very often people will be kind of testing you to see what type of confidence that level that you have. Um, because just like I said, the predators aren't looking for some, you know, fight. They're looking for an easy, an easy, uh, an, an easy victim. So, um, you know, think about these types of things with our body language. We want to make eye contact, our shoulders. Making sure our shoulders are up and back, not not leaning forward, not you know cur uh, clutched up. When you're on a when you're on a train or on a bus, are you clutching your your purse or your handbag to you, like it's valuable and you're afraid, or are you sitting there with confidence, making eye contact, feeling safe? Um, these are the types of things that you want to make sure that you're projecting, so you don't seem like an easy target. Now that leads me to me to to my next point of the interview process. Now quite often, it, criminals people that are trying to take advantage of you in some way or another, whether it be to rob you or to harm you, um, are going to go through some sort of interview process. Not always, but very often. And, you know, for they've done research where they've, uh, you know, studied, you know, hardened criminals, asking them about these types of things. And, for example, several criminals would say, like, they were going to rob a 7-Eleven or something like that. First, they would walk into the 7-Eleven go pour a cup of coffee, walk up to the counter to buy it, start a conversation with the clerk. If the clerk seemed you know, not confident, the clerk seemed like he would be an easy victim, well, that's when they would decide to rob the place. If, if the clerk seemed like you know, he might be a struggle, well, then they would just go find someplace else. You know, there was one that I remember specifically where they, there was a guy who would interview people coming away from an ATM machine. He'd wait for people to go to an ATM, ATM machine, and then as they were walking away, he had one question for them. He would just walk up to them and ask them what time it was. And he said if they did not look him in the eyes, he knew that he could uh, rob them with no problems. So, so that was his whole interview process. So, so basically, if you looked him in the eyes, he let you go. If you didn't, he was robbing you for your money. Um, yeah, so very interesting. You know? so, so a couple things there to keep in mind is um, you know, don't be afraid of easy questions. But also be conscious of your body. You know, I say there's a two there's a two step rule, which we'll be getting to a little bit later. But there's always a, uh, a safety zone, a buffer zone that you want to keep between you and other people that you know, strangers, where you feel like you might be at risk. Like right now, you don't have to worry about it. You got all your friends here, and even though you don't know me, you, you know you're in my business, and uh, uh, you can feel safe. But but when you when someone comes up to you on the street, it's nighttime, it's dark, you're alone. Uh, if, if they even if they ask you an easy question like hey can you show me how to get to X Street or or do you know what time it is you know it's easy you know to answer those questions is something you want to do but also just maintain a, a little safety room so that if they were to make a move towards you you have time to react. Um, <laughs> so remember now now making smart choices this is one of the things that I think you know Susan really wants to talk to you guys to hear about as well now smart choices you know not. I'm not even going to get to the alcohol yet. I'm going to get to um, just little things that we do, like making sure we avoid parking in remote or dimly lit areas. You know, avoid empty or sparsely traveled parking garages. Um, if you approach your car and notice a construction type van parked on your driver's side, you can enter through your car through the passenger door. Um, walk with a buddy whenever possible. You know, always travel in packs whenever possible, um, as distance increases your chances of being attacked. 
If you work downtown or if you're downtown and it's after dark, ask somebody to walk with you to your car. If you're out at a party, you know, and that's pretty common, um, don't let make them walk back, either drive them back or, um, or have them go with you. Now, exercise, one of the biggest things I see girls who, you, I don't know if you do this when you run or not, a lot of times people will, will run with earbuds in. Um, you gotta be really careful with that because I mean, countless times I read about people um, being, you know, attacked and raped because they never heard people coming up behind them. You know, they got these two earbuds in, you're running, you're in your own world, your defenses are totally down, someone could be behind you for, you know, a quarter of a mile and, and you'll never know it. And then once they feel that um, it's safe to, or, you know, it's safe for them to get you, they, they will. So, you know, sometimes I know people that run with one earbud in. Um, I know some people that have got ones that are kind of like just hang over the ear so they can hear the background noise as well, but you want to be careful with that. I know running with music is a lot of fun, but it's, uh, it can be dangerous. So, you know, make sure you feel very comfortable with your surroundings and, um, you know, I would try to avoid doing that. Um, let's see. <coughs> now, let's see. now, now, changing one's mindset through drugs or alcohol. You know, that's, that's the big one. That is the big one that you gotta be careful with. Because making the right decisions becomes very challenging when, when you're impaired. Now, um, impairing our judgment can lead to several bad outcomes. By not having our full wits about us, it's not only extremely difficult to make decisions we would make under sober conditions, but it also puts us into more of a victim position. Some predators will use that opportunity to get you more drunk either try to take advantage of your state of mind or they will simply see this as a chance to act as you cannot defend yourself properly. Now, did any, has anybody heard about Steubenville, Ohio? Anyone hear about that? No? Now, in Steubenville, Ohio, uh, you know, I'll tell you a little story. Um, there was um, some, some high schoolers, I think they were high school seniors or so, and um, they, they were at a party and a girl got so drunk she passed out and two football players decided to sexually assault her and they took about 150 photos with uh, camera phones and sent it out on social media and but this is the this is the crazy part this is the type of thing that you got to really keep in mind especially when alcohol is involved is there was almost 100 people at this, this party and not a single one of them had the moral clarity or moral courage to stop <coughs> this from happening you know in fact afterwards the entire town tried to help cover this up. So, I mean, you know, no one really wanted, to, these two football players were very popular, they were very good, this is a football-driven state where, you know, everybody cares about football, and they don't want to see these football players not only go to jail, but be kicked off the team. So, everybody kind of kept it hush-hush, almost blamed it on the girl for getting too drunk, and um, it, it was a bad situation. And, but, but, see, that, that brings me to my point of, the moral clarity and moral courage. And that's one of the things that I think that you all want to try to take with you to school. You know, you're not in a position to really make the right decision. Um, and if, if guys are drunk too, they're not gonna be having the moral clarity to, to know what is right and what is wrong. So you gotta be very careful there, very, very careful there. Um, you know, what she was saying is, is, is having good, um, you know, making sure that if you are doing that, making sure you're, you're following safe sex, using some sort of contraception, but, you know, I just really urge to be very careful in situations, stay in packs, um, make sure you're with people that you trust, um, and, and try to avoid getting to the point where you lose clarity, where you lose your ability to make decisions right or wrong, um, be able to tell people to stop, blacking out basically, blacking out's you know, bad, and, you know, you wake up, you don't know what, where you've been, you don't know what you've done, sometimes you're hurting, you don't know why, you, you don't know if you've fallen or, or somebody hit you or anything like that, so um, making sure of that. Now, most importantly, use your intuition. Yeah, I'm almost going on. <laughs> um, most importantly, use your intuition. If, if you get that feeling that something is wrong, that something doesn't feel right, don't ignore it, use your intuition. That's what it's there for. If something doesn't feel right, get the heck out of there. So, you know, whenever you feel like, you know, if something's not right, uh, listen to it. You know, there's nothing wrong with walking down the street. If you see a group of people on this side of the street that, that you feel a little uncomfortable with, there's nothing wrong with crossing the other side of the street and walking down that side. Um, you know, follow your intuition. Now, reality, when most people are attacked, the reality is they go through a brief period of, they say to themselves, is this really happening to me? Is this really happening? Or this really can't be happening to me. This can't be happening, can it? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, it is happening, and you need to act immediately, otherwise it's gonna to be too late. 
Um, the reason that we ask ourselves this question, and, and let me tell you, everybody's done this. Everybody's done this. If you talk to anyone that's been in a self-defense situation, there's always this delayed, most of the time there's this delayed reaction of being able to really um, comprehend what's going on because you're in total, you're in shock, you're in disbelief. And the reason for that is because we live in a society protected by laws, an area where we feel safe most of the time. So if you go through your entire lives, you know, 20 years or so, without any type of incident, without anyone attacking you, and all of a sudden it's happening, there's gonna be that moment where you are in disbelief that's happening. And this is where I said, came in, said earlier that, you know, for self-defense, this is where you have to be mean, this is where you have to be nasty, this is where you have to go for the throat right away. And I don't just mean throat uh, literally. I just mean going, you know, going for the going for the stop immediately, stopping the situation. Um, you can't afford to be a victim, so you you have to ask yourself when you you can't afford to ask yourself, is this really happening? By the time you answer the question, it'd be too late. Essentially, you need to make a decision right now: Am I going to be a victim, or am I willing to get mean and nasty, yell, fight, scratch, claw, kick, punch, or anything else I have to do to just survive? Um, so that's what women's self defense is about. Uh, it's all about you, and you need to make a decision today of making sure that you're going to be safe. Now, um, today, today we're going to work on some very basic techniques and stances. We never even get to that point. And then once you do, you you know, I'm a fifth degree black belt. I've been doing teaching for about 20 years now. And, uh, you know, I've got all these fancy pantsy moves where, where it, it takes literally years to master. And so to learn that in an afternoon and try to expect to be able to do those types of techniques under high pressure, um, possibly impaired, um, in, in quick amounts of times against people that are quite often stronger than us is, is very, very challenging to do. So, you know, simplicity is best. You know, to, to learn very, uh, very, very easy techniques to develop, to learn, um, learn some strike points, um, and, and really have a high margin of error or, or you know, low margin of error on them, so that so that they'll be effective for you. Now, um, today, why don't everybody stand up? I'm just going to two strides is what you want. Now, what is the stride? The stride's about that, about as far as I can reach with one 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 step, one you know, not a not a dwarf step, but an, an average step. So what we want to remember is if, if, if somebody's stepping closer to us, there's nothing wrong with stepping back. The other thing I want you to remember is always have one leg back. The reason that we do this is simple. It's for stability, okay? When your feet are like this, one little push can knock you back, okay? So you always want to have one foot behind you for stability and balance. Also, then you can move quicker. Like this, I call this the waiting at the bus stop stance. You know, my legs are straight. I'm just not doing anything. So from here, when someone starts to get close, you want to, you know, you don't want to freak out right away. As soon as someone walks up to you, to, if they're going to ask the time or something like that, you don't want to be like, back up, buddy! You don't want to be like that right away. You know, it's kind of jumping the gun. But you also don't want to let them get to that, that spot where you don't feel comfortable. So if you start to get, if they start to get close, you know, if I'm starting to get close to you, you want to just take a step back. Come on, you say, hold on, hold on, what's, what's going on? What, what do you need? Okay, so, so this is what I want us to do. So we're going to practice this. We're just going to get in this. We're just going to step back and put our hand up. Now make sure your elbow stays bent and make sure your fingers are spread. Now, see, you don't want to be like this. You want your elbows down and your fingers together. That, that portrays no confidence, okay? So I'm just going to step back and put my hand out. Okay, that's all I need, I need to do. Now, you also need to remember this, your voice. Now, voice on level one to 10. One's my quietest, 10 is my loudest. Okay, so now when I do that, I'm not going to go all the way up because I have to teach all day today and I'll lose my voice. But what, what you want to remember is it's like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, I can keep going, right? I'll stop about eight because then, then I'm going to feel it for the rest of the day. But you'll be surprised how many people can't do that. Most people, a lot of times I'll ask people to do it. I'll ask women to do it in women's self-defense and they get to about five and then they, they, they go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, it's all the same thing. <laughs> so you gotta be able to let it go. And you gotta use different levels to communicate different points because this goes back to the body language, you know? It's not just your body language, but it's also, you know, it's not what we say, but it's how we say it. So if I were to say, hey, hey, you're getting too close to me. That, that's not gonna cut it. 
if somebody has bad thoughts and bad intentions, that's gonna that's gonna that's like a that's like a you know lamb chops right there. Okay, so from here, what we want to do is we want to be in our stance, we want to be on the line. We're just gonna step back, we're gonna put our hands up, and we're gonna say, hey, stop right there. Okay? Nobody said it. Okay, so let's try it with me. Is there a, hey, stop right there. Hey, stop right there. There you go. Now freeze, 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 freeze. Now one thing, this is you want to avoid this. See how our arms out all the way? You want to avoid that. That's that's giving up too much of your body. I can easily grab her. Also, also but, but then, well, that's a good point. Here. Boom! She. This is a weapon. When your elbow's coiled, that's an, uh, that's a weapon. Okay. This is this is how you hit. When you hit, you you hit from your arms going out. Whether it's a palm strike or a fist, it doesn't matter. But by having this here, you can still use it in some way. By having it all the way out, you can't. Okay. So from here, let's the basics. The basic, very easy. Hey, hey, stop right there. You can say it any way you want, any nice way that you want. Is a Hey, you know, hey, not so close. Whatever you want to say. And I would say you want to say that like a two and a half, three level of your voice. Still, okay. And then, and then um, when, when I came over here, don't worry, I won't tell them it was you though. Uh, you know, her, her hand was like this. And my language was, I'm afraid. It was, I'm afraid. And you, you've got to, you've got to project, project yourself. you got to. Even if you don't feel it, I'm not telling you you got to feel that way. But you got to like fake it. Okay? you got to project it. you got to remember also... You never want to lean back, so you always want to take your hips with you, with your feet. Okay, so move those feet. That's what we've gotten for. Now, now I'm gonna, we're going to finish the stance. This is just the partial stance. This is just the. There's no reason to think that I'm in any type of danger now. So you know, when I'm when I'm in a parking lot, it's just as somebody gets too close to me. You know, come close to me for a second. You know. I'll do this sometimes, you know, yeah, that's close enough, that's close enough, all right? You know, if, if someone just gets close to me, if I don't feel, if I have a bad vibe from that person, I'll just put one leg behind me so that I'm either A, a ready to protect myself or B, ready to move quickly, okay? Now, so we're going to finish the self-defense stance. Now let's get up to this line right here. Now the self-defense stance is this. You want your feet to about shoulder width apart and this foot just slides back and it stays on the ball of your foot. Your knees are slightly bent. Now my hands go up. Now remember what we said about the elbows. They stay bent. My fingers are spread. Okay, that's important. You know, you'd be surprised how much you can read a body language just by the position of your hands. Like right now, it looks like, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of an introvert here with my hands. You know, I'm just kind of like keeping to myself. My fingers are here. I'm not, I'm not really willing to spread the muscles in my hands, okay? Now, the reason for this stance is this is the universal language for stop. You're from Germany, right? This, yeah. this means stop in Germany? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, see, everywhere, this means stop, okay? Now, this means let's fight. That's what it means. So you got to be careful with what message you're sending, okay? So, you know, for me, for, for multiple reasons. Number one, you know, if you have someone who's, who's, who's trying to intimidate, trying to get, take it to that next level, escalate it. A lot of times situations, there are very often people don't come in with bad intentions, but it escalates until it gets... or they're going to continue to approach you. If they continue to approach you, you do not stay there. That's when you maintain that air boundary. So we're going to back up. Now we're going to raise our level by about two levels, our voice level. We're going to say, I said back up, you're too close. Go. I said back up, you're too close. That's pretty good. That was good. That was good. Everybody got louder, I thought, that time. And then the next time, if they get even closer, we're going to back up. I said back up. Okay, go. I said back up. That's pretty good. It wasn't a whole lot louder, but that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna imagine in three levels. Okay, we're gonna do it now. After that third level, you're probably gonna have to defend yourself. Okay, you're probably gonna have to. I mean, maybe not, but if someone's willing to continue to approach you like that after three times, after you you know escalated your voice to the point where you're almost shouting, it, you know, it, it's it's usually not good. So we're gonna we're gonna just have three levels. So we're gonna get in our stance. We're saying, back up. You're too close. Back up. You're too close. I said back up. I said back up. Back up now. Back, back up, up now. Very good. Very good. Now your arms are getting out again. Far. Okay. That's good. Okay. Fine. 
Hey, I said back up. Hey, back up. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. Okay, they continue to come. So from here, we're gonna we're not gonna take it to the point where you need to defend yourself because we don't want to get hit. Number one, number two, we haven't gone over that part yet. But um, I want you guys to really we're not gonna back down unless we feel like you are, are projecting that voice. Okay. So remember, I'm, if, as he approaches, okay, freeze right there. Now this, I still feel comfortable with where he's at. Okay, now where is that line? So come a little bit closer, Nick. A little closer. This is that line. Why I call it with the one action line. He can now grab me in one action. Okay, he can get his arm out, he can grab me, he can punch me, he can, you know, pull out my hair, whatever he needs to do. Now, from here, he can do that very quickly from this position. Now, I want to get him to the point where he's two actions away. Because that gives me a one action chance to respond, to react. Does that make sense? So from here, now he has to step and reach for me. So as he's stepping, I can, I can go back even more. As long as I'm in a good stance where I'm controlling my legs. Okay, where I'm down low and I'm ready to bounce back. I'm ready to move my feet. So from here, when we approach, when we approach, we might come, we might stop. But remember, you have to keep that boundary of the air. So I get into my stance, he starts to come. I'm gonna step back in my stance, right there, and I'm gonna yell at you, or say it at a level like, Three, two or three. Hey, back up, you're too close. Now, if he continues to come, I gotta maintain that distance. Hey, I said back up, you're too close. Let's stay there though. <laughs> <laughs> then, if he continues to come again, so I've now, that second time I took my voice up to like a five or a six. Then I would, the final one, the third one, I wanna take it to like a nine, okay? Or even that 10. Okay, so when he finally comes in, hey, I said back up! You never want that. You never want your shoulders behind your hips. It's lack of control. Okay? Always hips behind shoulders. Hips behind shoulders. Hips behind shoulders. Now, if somebody does, you know, get a push or a grab on you, that's going to help prevent you from going to the ground, which is where you do not muscles doing the, the strike. So from here, my target though is under the chin. Okay, to drive it back. Boom, hard as you can, follow through. Not to here, follow through. Boom. All right, thank you, Mr. Dan. All right, so ready, we're in our stance. We're in our stance, fingers are spread. So with our front foot, kind of take a small rocking step forward. Boom, step, bring it back. Step forward, rock, bring it back. Now one, good, and one, Good. And now we're going to do two. One, two. Good. So turn your shoulders, 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 turn your shoulders. Good. Just like that. Good. Now these are our palms. Good. Harder. Try to go all the way to the mirror. Good. Like that. Very good. Hands up. Yellow. Again. Stronger. Now breathe down. I can tell that didn't hurt. Show your hand. Now you do it now. It's perfect. Get a force between you. Like right at that. If you go to fire. Get a no. Okay. 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 You see, see so many people get knocked out when you see MMA or boxing when they get hit in the jaw. And that's even with the mouth guard, okay? So that can, that can dampen the, the, the vibration, but it still doesn't stop at all times. So if you hit somebody really good here without a mouth guard in, with the palm of your, 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 your hand, it's a good chance that they might go to sleep. Now, here's the next hand strike we're going to do. And this one's a nasty one. This is what I was talking about earlier, about having to be a little mean, a little nasty. Why don't you put your hands like this? Put them together, okay? Kind of try to make points. Now, just at yourself in the mirror, I want you to aim at your eyes in the mirror. One, two, good. Boom, boom. Yeah, now listen, one, two, good. Now, one, two, just do left here, right here. One, two. Now, remember what I said, to defend yourself, you have to be, if, if you're in danger, someone's attacking you, you don't know what their intentions are, and you need to defend yourself, 
You don't worry about whether or not you're poking their eyes out. Okay? You go for that. You gotta be mean. You gotta be nasty. Okay, so from here, let's see Nick is looking like a doggy paddle or something. Right? You go into that. Straight in the shirt out, straight in the shirt out. Okay? Just boom, right up there. Boom. Now when you now now also we're gonna do the kick strike. Okay? So so this time what we're gonna do is you don't wanna do this. We're not the rockets. It's not Leg up all in one motion. It's two motions. It's the, it's the knee up, then the kick. So it's knee snap right back. Knee snap right back. Good. And you got to be quick. Now this is once again. Don't need to be. You don't need to be super flexible. You don't need to be kicking up here. You need to be able to kick about well for someone tall about about that high right there. Okay. So ready? Take that back leg. Let's just do the front knee up. Snap it when I count. Ready? And one. Boom. Right back. And two, boom, right back. Three, boom, right back. Four, boom. So he gets in too close. You know, I'm here. Hey, back up, you're too close. Hey, I said back up, you're too close. Hey, back up, you're too close. Boom, bang. Okay, so we're going to do one, then the other. We're going to do stuff to try to inflict pain to them or, or to control their body. I don't teach you that because those takes years to get good at. And even after years of developing them, the adrenal, the adrenal response that you have um, makes it very challenging. So a couple of things to keep in mind is if there's ever a situation where you feel like you need to defend yourself, your adrenaline is going to be pumping. Okay? Things are going to be, your body's going to be choppy. And what I mean by that is like, you know, trembling, shaking, not having best motor skills. So you want to have very big motions. So we're going to practice them a couple more times. So we're going to just get in our stance. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is just, just our, just our awareness. Just our awareness. That's just our awareness, okay? Just, you know, back away. You know, stop right there. Now we're going to get in our stance. Okay, we get a little lower. We get a little bit more set, like we're ready to move. Good. And we're going to see, you know, level one. Say, back away, you're too close. Back, back away, you're too close. Let's go back one. I said back up. I said back up. Hey, back up now! Back up now! Okay, now we're gonna do a knee strike. Go knee, boom. Now we're gonna do another knee. Boom, put it down. And palm strike, wind up. Palm strike, good, just like that. Back up again, let's do those strikes again. This time we're gonna do it with two knees and then one palm strike, ready to go. Knee, hit, knee, hit, then palm. Good, and back up. And again, ready this time. Kick, kick, then palm. So ready, it's snap, Snap, palm, just like that. All right, very good, very good. All right, good job, everybody. I have presentations on um, girls graduating from high school and going off to college. What would you suggest they do to kind of, or girls in general, to be able to defend themselves? Well, awareness. You know, uh, gen general awareness is the most important thing. It's just being aware of your surroundings, oh, aware of. Uh, 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 of, of everything that's going on around you, making sure that um, that you feel safe. You know, you want to remember that pe people are going to be looking for victims. People are going to be looking for people that are easy victims. And the best way of reading that is through people's body language. So you want to make sure you're always conducting yourself in a manner which has confidence, in a manner that projects um, confidence and in, um, in, in and, and courage that you're not going to be a back down that you're afraid. Um, be careful of making sure that you're, um, you know, you want to be aware without being paranoid. You know, I don't want you to walk around where you're constantly looking left and right all the time, but be aware of your surroundings. You know, don't don't walk around with headphones in your ears all the time where, where you have no idea what's going on anywhere other than here. And, and a lot of times, especially if it's sunny outside, our vision might be down here, right? You know, it's bright out, our eyes are down, um, we're not paying attention to the people around us, we're not paying attention to the cars pulling up near us. Um, so, um, you know, a couple things that I, you know, I would say to, to help stay safe is, um, you know, try to stay together in groups. You know, always try to stay in groups um, with, with friends. Um, it really helps out. Make sure that when you are jogging, you're not using your iPod. Um, you know, or at least putting it in one ear only so that you can hear things going on around you. Um, when you, when you, uh, you know, 
uh, making smart choices, making sure that when you're parking your car, you're doing it in places that are, you know, if for instance, if you were coming here at night to train here at night, I would say to try to park right here, right outside the front of the building, not way over there by the tree line, or, you know, far away where it's not lit, where, where you have to walk through the entire parking lot, where people can be hanging out by your car, hiding, um, those types of things. So smart choices like that, just, you know, kind of awareness choices, um, not really paranoid uh, choices, but, but making the smart decisions. Now, you know, for, for you also, you know, one of the biggest dangers that you guys are going to be having is the, the total new freedoms that everybody has. You know, you guys are going off to school, you're going to have whole new freedoms that you've never had before. You know, you're going to be living on your own uh, or, or, or living with, with other people like age that are going through the same experiences as you. Um, guys are going to be there. Uh, there's going to be a lot of exposure to drugs and alcohol, you know, you're going to have those types of choices where, where at home it's a little bit more sheltered, you're definitely safe, you never have to worry about something bad in, in your own home, you know, you don't have to worry about your your, your parents, you know, you, you feel safe there, um, whereas if you're, you know, even if you're in your dorm, if you're, you know, you know, in your home at school and you've been drinking, you know, you got to be careful, you got to be very careful, you know, um, you know, you got to make sure you're using the right choices, you know, like what, you know, I know Susan's really big into the contraception, uh, and, and I think that's very, very smart, I mean, 50%, 50%, I mean, that's a huge stat for this country, I didn't know that, um, I mean, that's incredible, and I would imagine that if you were to look at the, the numbers of just the pregnancies that occurred during uh, college, the percentage probably even higher. If that's 50% of the entire U.S., uh, you know, I would imagine it's even higher in college because, you know, I mean, I don't think most people go into college thinking, I'm going to go get pregnant. Um, you know, I think most people are thinking, I'm going to school. Um, and, uh, you, but you get in there and you're going to be, you know, you're going to be given a lot of freedoms and, and um, you know, the, the one thing you got to be, you know, everyone's probably heard of alcohol being called liquid courage. You know, you got to be careful of that because, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a fifth degree black belt. I've been doing this for over 20 years now. And, um, you know, if I have alcohol in my system, I can't trust my techniques. I can't trust that I'm going to be able to protect myself if I need to. So, and, and that's just the reality. It, you know, so and that's me with tw over 20 plus years experience. So someone who's got tw you know an hour, hour and a half of, of working on some very basic but very effective techniques, you know, you put you know all of a sudden you you impair your ability to you, you know your physical ability. It's going to make it extreme you know extremely difficult to be successful. And you put yourself in a situation also where you're not really able to make the same decisions that you would make um, under sober mindset and you know it's kind of recipe for disaster you know either regrets or you know something that you wish you had done differently um, or or you know you're going to be putting yourself in a situation where um, where something very bad can happen. I mean you know you, to look at the flip side we're you know I'm talking to a bunch of young women today um, but you know let's look at the guy side you got guys that are going through the same situation you know they're all of a sudden reaching that age where now they've got all this freedom they're going to school they're living with other guys um, you know the culture of guys you know the culture of manhood is uh, it, it is it's a little bit it, it, it's it's I think I think it's tough for both, both sexes, you know, for women and for men. But a lot of times, men, you got to think about things that are is stress to a lot of men um, from a very young age. I mean, you'd be surprised. I, I, I hear people tell their kids that are four or five years old this. Come on, be a man. You know, well, what is being a man? Being a man is not showing how you're feeling. You know, being dominant. Uh, you know, having some sort of sexual conquest. You know, uh, making lots of money. These are the types of things that are stress to to boys at a young age and all of a sudden you're going away to school and you're having all these freedoms and then you mix in alcohol you see you know you're even if the situation is uh you know I mean you hear all the time about these situations where like it's, you know what do they call it date rape you know I mean that's some scary stuff one guy says it's a date the other person says it's rape I mean you know and, and, and I'm sure you know there's something I've heard a long time ago you know uh, you know, there's story A, there's story B, but the truth is C, right? You know, and, and so like, you know, kind of the truth is lost in translation. So you want to be very careful. Make sure you you're, you're, you always feel confident with uh, s saying what you want to say. 
use the word no. You know, you'd be surprised. These people say that that is the most uncomfortable thing to tell people. Is no. You know, no, stop. So, being very clear with your, uh, with what you want. You know, don't don't leave it to interpretation later on. Make sure that you, you, you know, you're very clear. Um, stay with groups. Um, and if you do drink, you know, do, you know, number one, I would recommend don't drink. I, mean, you know, I understand you want to always listen to that. Um, you know, so so if you do, make sure you're in a situation with people that you trust. And that, that, but but you can't rely on that. They can be getting drunk too. They can be passing out before you do. Um, so you want to get to the point where where, where you feel like um, where you know, trying to try to try to judge yourself so that you don't get to the point where you black out because that's when things get really dangerous. And 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 this you know remember this is that most of the time men can drink more than women. Right. Yeah. That's why we have covered on the block already. Too. Yeah. Men can drink. But they might have metabolized the alcohol way different than men. Yeah. So they shouldn't try to keep up with the men. And I really like that you put a focus on the men's perspective too, that they should probably get some kind of self-defense training as well. Yeah. Because it can get ugly for them too on campus when there's some other stronger guys trying to bully another man. Yeah. So they should be able to... Absolutely. Themselves too. Yeah. Well, that and also, you know, to to um, you know, to get the perspective of of you know, sometimes you know, these types of things that we talked about earlier, like the predator syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, is is something you can see it on the kindergarten level. Mm -hmm. You can see it on the, on the kindergarten level. I mean, that's what bully is. A bully is a predator. You know, is looking for someone who's weak to pick on. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, this this kid walks funny. I'm going to mess with him. You know, um, and, that, and, it, and it continues, it continues. I mean, you see people in school like, oh, you know, this person dressed funny. I mean, chance, I think it's kind of in our DNA. I mean, I've been guilty of it myself before. I've picked on people. I've been picked on, you know, it, it just happens sometimes. Sometimes, you, you know, I've messed with some of my best friends about, you know, certain things, quirks and in, in, in their, their character or things that they've done or something like that. I think we all, have, you know, tend to, to kind of lean that way sometimes, but it, but you know, some people take it to the extreme. Some people are are, are pushing people, and pushing people, and you know, and, and the one big thing and that 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 I urge you guys to be careful of, you know, read a hey, read up on that Steubenville case because let me tell you, um, that's what freaks me out the most is when when groups are together and everyone's kind of having a good time, especially with alcohol involved, um, the moral clarity. And the moral courage to stop something that you don't see or that you see is wrong and you know it, it and it's very hard to do that it's hard to do that it's hard to like you know when when everybody is is, is feeling okay you know if there's a feeling of group okay with something going on it's very hard to be the voice of reason to come forward and say hey 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 this no 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 you know if you see a girl passed out and the guy is starting to, you know, even if it's someone she was with earlier, and he's starting to, you know, um, advance on her in some way. You know, you think to yourself, you know, you're having a good time. You're thinking to yourself, oh, it's okay, they were together earlier. So we you need know. to encourage more people to step up. Right, absolutely. And, to you gotta remember you. and step up. Right. Might have. The more, you know, the, that's what I mean, the moral clarity to know, hey, wait a minute, this person has passed out. This, or, or this person is beyond the point of being able to make a reasonable decision, um, and then having the moral courage to try to 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 intervene. Because a lot of times, I mean, you, a lot of times you'll even hear that the guy, you know, who, who's usually the aggressor in these situations. I, in fact, I, I haven't ever think I ever heard it the other way around. Um, a lot of times, the guy regrets it the next day. You know, a lot of times, but like, you know, they're not clear, clear of mind. You know, they're not clear of mind. They're impaired. They're thinking, oh, I was just with her. We were kissing earlier. Everything was good. And we're both drunk. And, you know, and, and see, once again, she's keeping up with him with the alcohol. All of a sudden, she is past the point of being able to, to uh, be even, you know, she's blocked out. She's not being able to make decisions. He is still kind of able to, at some point, some level. But he thinks it's okay. People around see, hey, it's okay. They were together earlier. So, you know, just, you know, 
you know, I would encourage everybody to try to take that back to school with you. Is you know, the, is trying to spread, you know, the moral clarity and moral courage with people because I mean that's, I think that's one of the things that's really challenging, you know, our society, our whole civilization right now in the United States is that you know, people tend to watch. You know, we, we, we you know we've kind of become numb. We we, we we grow up on these. You know, for the past 20 years, there's been all these reality shows where like you see the most crazy train wreck lives on TV and we get used to just watching it, you know. Um, so, you know, you're going to be exposed to a lot of different things and, you know, I wish everybody luck. Um, you know, be careful and enjoy the school. Thank you so much. It's when you feel like someone's too close. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> so, you did good with your stance, but what did you forget? <laughs> she forget you forgot that safety zone, okay, of air. Safety zone of air. So I'm getting closer. Back up. Hey, I, I saw you get my up. car. Come on. I said back Come on, up. You. Boom. Boom. There you go. Boom. Harder. Scream. Bam. Like that. Yeah. There you go. Very good. Give her a hand. Good job. There you go. Very good. Very good. Very good. That was much better that time. You you controlled your stance. You had distance. And once I got too close, you let it go. Very good. And you're up. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now, now look, right away, you know, I, I'm a big reader of body language. You, know, <laughs> you remember, be very conscious of your body language. I'll tell you a secret. I'll tell you a secret real quick. It works both ways. Your emotions control your body language, but your body language can control your emotions as well. So, you know, you know, we tend to feel like this when we're, you know, walk like this when we're not confident. Even if you're not feeling confident though, if you can kind of fake it, you know, you've probably all heard the saying before, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. You know, your body will start to pick up on that and start to feel slightly different. You know, if you're depressed all the time, if you walk around with a smile, you'll be reminding your brain to feel good, okay? Sometimes people actually <coughs> perpetuate their own depression by, by the ways they, they hold their bodies. So make sure you project what you want people to read. You know, you don't want people to read this. You know, you want to project, uh, project confidence. All right. All right. Hey, how you doing? I said back up. Hey, you doing? <laughs> how you doing? I'm just, I'm trying to get to know you. Come on, girl. I want to know you. Oh, there you go. Hit, hit. Don't hold back. Harder. Bam. There you go. There you go. There you go. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Not bad, not bad. We gotta get you. I think you have a tiger in there somewhere, though. All right, you're up. All right. You ready? Yep. All right. <laughs> Mr. Nick, you do this one. Let me see. Let's see. I'm running out of characters in my head. Let's see if you can get one. Okay, now, great. Now, this has happened a couple times today. Points of power is here. This is your point of power, okay? Not here. Now, if anyone runs, if you think about this for a second, if you were going to race somebody, if you were going to race somebody, you would not want to line up like this to race. You know what I mean, Mark? Say, go. We got nothing there. Same thing for your knee strike from here. And you all saw it when we were practicing towards the mirror, and we did this one. Everyone did great. As soon as we switched to this leg, everyone was like, oh, this one feels weak, right? That front leg has no power. And it, it becomes both legs front if they're both here. So whenever you're doing this, you know, you know, sometimes it's even good to get some hand grips. But make sure after the first one, don't just drop it here and then, you know, that's not good. You want to really boom from back, boom, boom, just like that, okay? Get it back, from back to forward, back to forward. All right, let's see. Well, you've already gone, right? There you are gone. You're up, next time. Everyone scoot up a little bit. All right, so you're in line at the grocery store. Okay. You're in line at the grocery store. Oh, no, the line is that way. The line is that way. Hi, hi, hi. No! You said you're standing, staying here to do. Don't be fucking real. Oh, you're up, you're up. I'm so sorry. Now you're fine. Alright, here we go. 
Back up. I said back up. Back up now. Lower, lower, dude. Multiply. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Just like that one. Very good. Very good. Very good. Good, my man. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. Very good. Some, some things I forgot about you. You're coming back out. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Well, no, she, that was the that was the placebo one. All right, ready? What's up? What's up? I said back up. What's up? I said back up. I said back up. There you go. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent.